This morning, we are learning more about what you should expect when your child rides the bus to and from school here in Duval County. Students return to class, as we mentioned earlier, a week from tomorrow. Rebecca Cardona is the business representative with Teamsters Local Union 512, joining us this morning via Zoom. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning. So parents may be surprised to hear that buses, when they return next week, will actually run at maximum capacity. So that means no social distancing at all? You're absolutely right, Jen. And the kickoff meetings that will, um, is conducted each year prior to school starting, the coordinators with the transportation department um, made the employees aware that capacity for the high school and middle school age students would go back to full capacity um, and the elementary students would increase to 49. Um, and, and just to make the public aware, these buses are small and closed space. Um, these children will be seated elbow to elbow. Um, no social distancing is possible on school buses. And with the measures that have now been dropped um, with making masks optional, um, those precautions make it much more um, apparent that this virus could be spread amongst the um, students on the bus. Are you worried? I can tell just by the inflection in your voice. Are you worried? I mean, is this safe thinking about, let's think just, you know, about this bus drivers themselves who may have high risk, you know, conditions? Absolutely. I, I can tell you, Jen, last year um, we negotiated safety precautions um, that were put in place prior to the school year starting. Um, and based off of those precautionary measures that we negotiated, um, we were made aware of very few cases, positive cases. Um, but now with some of those mitigating measures being removed, the mass, the increased capacity, um, along with the record positive cases that we're seeing um, across our state, um, a stronger variant um, of COVID now with the Delta variant, um, this could be the perfect storm for a super spreader um, aboard the buses of Duval County. Uh, also, we are seeing breakthrough cases as well in which people who are vaccinated are still getting the, the, you know, sick, not as sick. They're not ending up in the hospital, many of them, but still there is that concern for those bus dra drivers who have made the decision to get vaccinated. They still may not be protected if kids who are younger than 12 and are unable to be vaccinated get on the bus. They're not wearing a mask. Absolutely. And I can tell you that being in this industry and working alongside some of these employees for 24 plus years, um, I can tell you that over the summer months, I have been made personally aware of numerous resignations over the summer months leading up to the start of this school year. Yeah. So are you worried? I know when we talked about this at the beginning of the last school year, given the concern uh, certainly about bus drivers and their health, are you worried about another shortage and not having enough bus drivers? Absolutely. Um, and, and the biggest challenge is, is the unknown of where this virus is going. Um, the potential of the load capacity with the driver shortage. Um, last year, these drivers were doubling and tripling routes. And there was a huge driver shortage last year. That driver shortage is, I'm sure, go only going to increase um, based off of, of now these other mitigating measures being dropped. Um, so, yes, it, I, I believe this is going to be a huger issue um, that is going to be presented to these carriers, Duval County, and the parents of students that attend Duval County schools. So, Rebecca, is there something then that you can do to somehow mitigate and reduce the chances of spread when it comes to maybe opening all of the windows? I know it's hot, particularly in August, and that a lot of the buses have AC, some may not. Is that at least an option? And what about sanitizing the buses between routes? So the MOUs that we negotiated at the start of last school term, those measures are still in place. Those MOUs are still in place. Um, so what are the, those the, for those who may not So there, there's five important points of that M, those MOUs that we negotiated with carriers. The PPE, meaning the mask, the gloves, hand sanitizer, those types of items. Um, social distancing for the drivers. We are still going to maintain a six feet safety zone for our drivers. Um, sanitizing of the buses daily. Ventilation with the AC going and a number of windows um, vented for circulation and safe loading and unloading. Um, the district at this point has made the decision to make uh, masks optional for the students. However, our MOUs are still in place. Um, here at Local 512, we stand with the teachers, um, with the school staff, um, and in and, and hoping that the district will make a different decision as it relates to the mask mandate, um, but we will always put the health and safety of our members first. Um, our, our local and state leaders need to put the health and safety of not only our children, but the bus drivers and monitors, our teachers, our school supporting staff first and stop making their lives a political pawn.
And Rebecca, of course, more conversation about this as we get closer and closer to the beginning of the school year. I know that um, you have indicated also that uh, masks will be available for students if they do not have one and would like to wear one on the bus. Uh, we will continue to follow this conversation throughout the next several weeks. Rebecca, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you so much, Jen.